Raging Cajuns podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Wilson, and I'm alongside a very, very special guest, the new head coach for Raging Cajuns baseball, the Matt Dex. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Good to have you. I know it's been a pretty um, eventful offseason for you, a lot of work uh, you've been putting in. Um, first off, how you how you like being back in, in Lafayette? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's been surreal. Uh, coming back, bringing the family back, and and just uh, rekindling relationships and and reconnecting with people. It's 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 been amazing. The circumstances are uh, obviously not what anybody wanted or had imagined, but uh, to to feel the love and and uh, support from Cajun Nation and just everybody, it's been it's been amazing for me and the family. When did baseball start for you? True, man. Probably since I could walk, you know. Uh, started playing officially, if you will, when I was eight. Mm. And pretty much all I've known for the last 40 years. Were you good, though, when you started? Because like, we watch TV and we're like, <laughs> man, I can do that right now. But then you started. Were, were you uh, I was I was pretty good as a kid. And uh, I, I played every sport and, and did pretty well. And as time went on, got more and more average mm -hmm. and and, <laughs> more and had more to average. really dig into that compete bone and, mm -hmm. and find a way to stay in the frame. You remember your high school stats? Man, not really. I, I remember we won a, a championship and, and that's about it. Yeah, that wasn't a humble brag at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> played a little bit in college and uh, yeah. and uh, went to the pros a little bit. Yeah. Huh? Tell me about your college I was, experience. I was somewhat of a, a, a late bloomer developer, if you will. My grades weren't the best in high school and went the JUCO route and then the the NAI route and, and uh, you know, I had some some good tools, uh, not great. And my biggest asset was was my compete and, and my want to and desire. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to play professionally for three years and, and after college and then did what most average players do. I started coaching mm. and uh, realized I wasn't going to get to the big leagues pretty quick and, and had the opportunity to jump in with Dave Van Horn, who's the head coach at, at Arkansas now, and, and Rob Childers, who's the head coach at A&M, and uh, start my coaching career at Northwestern State. You're speeding. You're going pretty fast here. We're going to slow it down a bit. When did you meet your wife? Wow, man, you put it in reverse. Yeah. yeah. We met in high school. And... Uh, I knew time uh, Matt Deggs playing yeah, at high school ball. Yeah, I knew uh, I knew of her in, in junior high. What and, do you mean you uh, knew of her? I was fortunate enough to get to spend not three years in junior high, but four. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I liked it so much I stayed an extra year. And mm -hmm. uh, at my last year in junior high, they consolidated the two junior highs in Texas City. And uh, she came over and I was like, hmm. And then never worked up the nerve to talk to her until I was about a sophomore in high school. Yeah. And uh, that summer we started dating and pretty much been together ever since. Since high school, huh? Yeah. That's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so she's been with you throughout the entire Man, journey. She's going to get an award. Yeah. 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 Um, you go from the pros and start coaching. She's with you this entire time. When do the kids start coming into the fold? Well, we got married. Uh, we were at Northwestern State and got okay. married, and uh, then we moved on to, to be the head coach at Texarkana Junior College, and a little while after that, our, our boy Kyler was born in 99, and he's now a sophomore here at UL. Really? Yeah. Wow. So uh, you go to Texarkana, and then the first the first child is, is yes. born. So we're talking about a wife who's been through, even with young children, and I think what goes un understated is kind of the role of a wife of a coach oh yeah who's traveling it's not like a these one day in your back you know you're having whole series you're out of town for yeah without a supportive wife you i don't i don't care which sport it is you you stand no chance right and uh you know she's she's uh she's raised three three kids basically mm -hmm. and uh and takes care of me and yeah. so, uh, yeah, I could tell you some stories, man, uh, of the sacrifices that she's had to make. And not only her, but any coach's wife. Mm -hmm. And then what uh, what goes through your mind when you kind of, you go through the years, five years later, all of a sudden, you've got three kids and they're getting older, they're talking now, and you, you miss a, a lot of key moments. You do. Uh, and and that's, uh, it weighs on you, you know, and... and uh, 
they that you blink and man they're in school and then you look up again and, and you know they're driving or, or in college and and it's you, you really do time flies and that's not an underestimation it really does and you you, you look up and a lot of it's gone and uh you know we're we're blessed to have three incredible kids that have all excelled in the classroom or whatever they've tackled and and uh you know have just really been an absolute blessing for me and kathy kids are growing up you're excelling on the diamond you take uh texarkana to their first ever trip to the juco world series you did your homework you get a call from arkansas yeah how'd that come about well you know dave and i van horn was at, at nebraska and they were uh competing to go to the World Series. Our, our season had just finished up. We just fell short of going back to the JUCO World Series. Hunter Pence was actually on that team. and uh, I got a call. We were driving one night, and I got a call from uh, Dave, and it said, he said, hey, uh, you want to go to Arkansas? And I was like, heck yeah, man. And uh, so we had actually, it's a crazy story, we'd actually sold our house in Texarkana. We were moving across town, but we hadn't closed on the other house. Mm -hmm. And so the realtors weren't real happy, but we backed out of the other house, had already sold that mm -hmm. house. I moved everything we owned into storage. Kathy and Kyler, that's all we had at the time, went all the way back to Tech City, Galveston area, and they stayed with family. And I lived in the, the uh, dorms slash apartments oh, where the boys lived until... Dave got done with that World Series, and it was announced that he was going to Arkansas. Those who know, know, but what was that conversation uh, like with your wife when you said, hey, um, I'm going to move into a dorm, you head on back to... Man, she, I think she was just pretty happy about that bump in pay. Okay. And, yeah, she was willing to do whatever at that point. Okay. And, and so uh, we were living off $28,500 for a while, and then I think I bumped it all the way up to thirty nine and uh to live in the dream we thought we were rich and and then uh arkansas called and that was just a brand new ball game wait as a head coach of texarkana you were making 20, 20 i started off at 28 and we thought we were rich and finished <laughs> at like 39. okay and uh you know that's all we needed yeah um arkansas sec champions in 2004 um texas a m yeah gives you a call what happens there? yeah uh, you know, in 04, we were picked to come in 10th out of 12 teams, and uh, we won the SEC and hosted and won a, a regional and super regional and wound up in Omaha. And 05 comes around, and, and I think we were like fifth in the country and lost a couple of key guys and kind of limped to the finish line. And at the same time, uh, A&M job had come open, and, and Coach Van Horn knew I had a serious interest in it, as did Rob Childress, who was at Nebraska, and we were best friends. Mm. And... Uh, you know, so we had kind of decided whoever goes there, we're both going to go. And uh, it, it, all the pieces kind of came together. And uh, my wife had gone to school there. His wife had. My sister had. Mm -hmm. And it was about an hour and a half from where we grew up. So it was kind of a no-brainer for us. And uh, I left her behind for six weeks. She was eight, month, eight months pregnant with our third child, Chloe. And so she was wrangling two other kids, eight months pregnant, and Rob and I were in College Station recruiting every day, living in the Hilton Hotel. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, your career, everywhere you go, you start, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning. You kind of have this, you have this gift that you've been attacking since, uh, since leaving the pros. Um, 2011 comes around. Um, you've been open about um, the situation there alcohol kind of being a mm -hmm. demon for you. Mm -hmm. um, take me back to that time and when did you know that you were really going through it? You know, I had been in rehab in 2010 in the summer and that didn't phase me and, and you know, this just, this had me in its grasp and I was just absolutely lost, still functioning at an extremely high level at work and in fact, the team I got fired from wound up in Omaha and that, mm. that was a team that we had coached and recruited and put together. Uh, and, you know, Rob, God bless him, he gave me every opportunity to get it right. My family did as well, and I just uh, couldn't put down a beer bottle. Mm. And, uh, you know, the, the, the trimmings that come with addiction or, you know, lying, calm, you know, whatever uh, you can do to get away with it, you're going to do. And it just kind of, it, it reached ahead, Kevin, and uh, something had to break. And, and on uh, January 3rd, 2011, it did. Mm. And, uh following day I was fired and uh, you know my life's never been the same since then. 
when you say addiction to it, like, so you're kind of drinking it like water. It was kind of your everyday, you needed it to, to, to function at that point. You know, I've never been one that would say I was physically dependent. Yeah. I'm, I'm a guy that runs 100 miles an hour all the time. I'm either all in or all out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if if I, I haven't had a drink in almost seven years, but if we went and had a beer today, you might not do it again for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I might not stop for five years, mm-hmm. but I would stop for a period of time and then pick it back up. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd thing, but when it gets you, it gets you and you run hard and that thing burns hot and there's a lot of destruction in that path. And uh, so, uh, trust me, the society's better off, and my family and myself are better off without me drinking. The uh, you get hit with the brick wall of losing your passion. Yeah, it's your identity. You know what happens to you then? It's the darkest, dankest, m- most miserable spot you ever want to find yourself in. And you know, I, I didn't want to wake up, and uh, for a period of time, didn't even want to go on, and would have to to just literally hold my little four year old Chloe at the time just to feel her heartbeat and, and, and have a why, you know? And when your identity is wrapped up in, in what you do instead of who you are as a, as a child of God and a husband and a father and a son and a brother and a friend, uh, and then things don't go your way, man, it is absolute uh, desolation. And uh, that's kind of where I was, man. It was desolate and it was dark and uh, only by the grace of God am I here today. You ought to work for some time, a long time. 430 days to be exact outside of the game of baseball the thing you love most yeah your phone rings tony robichaud take me back to that well you know i had gone from working at a feed mill loading 18 wheelers full of horse feed cattle feed deer corn just to make ends meet Mm -hmm. uh to sell in pharmaceuticals and I got out of an appointment one day and, and Jeremy Talbot, who's now one of my assistants, called me and he said, hey man, you're not gonna believe this. This is in the middle of the spring, that never happens. Uh, coach is gonna be looking for a hitting coach and recruiting coordinator, I was like, when? And he said, uh, right now. And I said, you call Coach Robe and you tell him I'd come there for free. That's how mm-hmm. desperate I was, I literally would have. And uh, you know, what he had to pay me at the time, I dang near did. <laughs> and and. Uh, but it was an opportunity. It yeah. was it was a blessing, and and uh, you know he, I sat down with him and told him everything, and I'll never forget this. He said, "I don't care what you've done. I only care about what you're going to do about it." And I jumped in, and man, the healing started, and and uh, it was just the most miraculous two and a half years me and my family's ever been a part of. When you were initially sitting down with Coach Robichaux and telling your story, did you literally feel like you were sharing your testimony, kind of? Pleading for a shot, or what? What was the feeling? Now I was there? doing. There was great uh, angst and anxiety in doing it because it's a you know, you don't know. Mm-hmm. But he was a different man. He was cut out of a different cloth, and and he had a very strong backbone, and uh, did not necessarily care about what others thought. And if he believed in a man, he was gonna he was gonna redeem him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I took a chance and had no other choice but really to just bear it all to him. And. Uh, you know, he, he first became a boss and then quickly became a, a, a mentor and then a friend and then one of my best friends. You gave it your all for him. You guys have a miraculous, unbelievable 2014 season. Take me back to the feelings you had there. Success again at a high level. College World Series, Coach? It's just redemption. To me, the, the gift of a second or third chance is, is the most powerful force on earth. And for two years, man, I coached hungry. I coached, you know, with my hair on fire because I was I was back and and redeemed and I was free. And, uh, you know, it was just the perfect storm. There was a lot of broken kids on that team. And uh, coach was somewhat broken at the time. And everybody, you know, got just ordained a bunch of broken guys to come together. It was almost like a gang. And we were impenetrable. We thought we were bulletproof. And uh, dang near went undefeated, 58 and 10, number one ranked team in the nation. It was pretty incredible. The support here, some of the faces you probably still see around oh, to yeah. this day. Um, what's it like to, to, Lafayette is just a different area, right? Yeah, there's, there's nothing to really describe, you know, how unique and special the, the culture really is. Mm-hmm. It's a culture centered around family and loyalty and hard work and and enjoying life 
and and you know uh, if you work hard and I tell our team this all the time because I've seen it firsthand man if you play hard you work hard and and you go out there and just compete as hard as you can these the, the Cajun nation man they're gonna show up for you because they love to see a scrap and and that's what they're gonna see when we play 2014 comes to a close after the magical season and then you get some attention again yeah you know I had I had a couple of chances to get back into the SEC and uh, just had really found a you know where I was supposed to be here at UL and uh, you know I'm I'm on team David of David and Goliath fame that's mm. that's kind of my that's that's kind of my game that's what I like and uh, is being an underdog and uh, so turn those down to to stick around and and uh, just was sitting. Kathy and I were watching TV one night in the bedroom and and saw uh, where the Sam Houston State job came open, which once again is in the Houston area, mm-hmm. which is where we grew up. And Kathy said, "Are you going to apply for it?" I said, "No." Nah. I was still kind of bitter at the time, you know, and not having been, you know, that. 2014 team the season had just ended and right. we, we thought we were going to be national champions and and she said well yeah you are <laughs> and I said no I'm not and she said yeah you are I said well I'll tell you what I got the AD cell number I'm just going to send him a text and so at like 10 30 at night I sent him a text and that's kind of how it started wow you take the job at Sam Houston I did um did you have any regret leaving man it was hard for a long time and uh, I think the word from my kids was, you're the worst dad in the world, mm. <laughs> uh, which is tough to hear, you know, because they had finally got settled here and everybody loved it. And mm. we had that amazing run in 13 and 14. And then, uh, but no, it was hard to leave, but I never, never once looked back. It was an opportunity to, to run my own program and, and uh, you know, something that I had always wanted to do at this level. And uh, we just had an amazing run there over five years and just met and made incredible relationships. And it's a heck of a school and just a great place to coach. That uh, initial conversation with Tony Robichaux as you decide to step away, what was that like? Yeah, it was was real quick. It was, I knew this was coming. I'm so excited for you. Mm. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see what you guys do over there. And we talked all the time and, you know, they we would play each other every year just about and uh tough to leave but it was kind of you know our time and uh you know the rose shows are still some of our best friends today you uh do what you do go to another program and winning ensues uh, to the point where you go viral which is a a big word nowadays you uh play florida state Uh, not the uh, best outing for your club but boy that post game speech coach yeah, it was uh, it was crazy, and and it was uh, it was something that I can't even repeat to you today. I mean, if you said, "Tell me what you said," I couldn't. It was just the Lord and the Holy Spirit just bubbling up and speaking through me. And uh, it was uh, you know we had one where we had a three run lead in the first game, and we had just beat Tech twice and Arizona twice to even get to that point. Mm-hmm. And, no Southland team, much less any team at Sam, had ever done that. And we really thought we were going to go to Omaha. And, uh, you know, we got beat really, really good in the second game, 19 to nothing. And, and uh, just the press conference was actually over. And the, the boys next to me had kind of bared their souls. And uh, there was a reporter in the back that said everybody was getting up. He said, I just have one last question and, and you know, asked, what's this team mean to you? And I just spoke from the heart mm. and uh, woke up the next day and all the kids are going crazy talking about viral. And I didn't have social media at the time. I was like, what are you talking about viral? <laughs> we had a pretty wild group. I was like, what do we do now, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's the world just did a 180 at that point. Right, and right. and uh, God opened a door for me to get his story out there that in the works that he's done uh, through, you know, my my falling down and getting back up. And uh, it's just been amazing ever since then. You get some points from your kids for uh, when that video dropped and, and went crazy? Did you get some some cool points from back in the house? <laughs> I, you know, they were, yeah, I don't think anything shocks them, with, <laughs> you know, as far as anything we do. So 
uh, they were just disappointed we lost. We weren't going to go to Omaha. Right, right. Um, well, fast forward to this past year. Um, Sam Houston State, you're building a, another great program out there, uh, victory over victory. And then, unfortunately, we hear about the loss of yeah. Tony Robichaux. How how that hit you, and when did you, when did you get that news? Well, you know, it was... Uh, just kind of back up, you know, we, just to put in perspective, we had, we had, a, our culture was firmly in place and we'd won six championships in four years. And I thought I was going to retire there. Mm. And uh, Kathy and I sat down one night and just to relax and looked at my phone and it said, uh, somebody shot me a text or something said, Coach Robe had a heart attack. I was like, what? And uh, so Kathy got on the phone with Colleen or something and, uh, you know, we found out he had worked a camp and, and had to go to the hospital and had a heart attack and, uh, and got in touch with them. And, and then they were going to do a little stint and they did that and uh, that didn't take. And now they're going to have to do open heart surgery. And I just, uh, we just prayed as hard as we could for them and tried to lift them up. And, and uh, you know, but I knew in my gut. And I just felt the Lord calling us to, you know, if, if we have to, we're going to get uncomfortable here. And, uh, you know, and I, a week or two go by and I was, I was out working out and came in and I had a call from a coach, another coach uh, in the league. And I started calling back and he's like, hey, man, how you doing? And I said, I'm doing all right. And he said, I'm sorry. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, you don't know, do you? And I said, no, why? And he said, we lost Coach Robichaux. And uh, I just basically, I don't remember much after that. You know, I hung up and just kind of fell apart. And, uh, you know, the man saved my life. And, and uh, you know, so it really hit home. And uh, it had been a tough summer to begin with. We had lost one of our closest friends and one of our biggest supporters at Sam uh, about a month prior to that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, had had a coach move on that was real close to us. And uh, so it had just been an emotional summer already, and that one really hit home. And, uh, I just looked at Kathy and I said, well, you know what we got to do. I hadn't been talked to or anything. I just knew that what coach had started and the, the great work that he did on us, we were going to carry it on. Having that feeling, that, that realization that you're going to – you already knew that you were going to do everything you can to keep this program moving, uh, kind of in his uh, in his model. Um, what's that kind of say to the relationship you guys had, and um, and uh, what you look to do moving forward? Well, I'm a lot of things, but one thing I am is very, very loyal. My circle's really tight, and the guys that are in that, I'm, you know, I'd take a bullet for. And uh, you know, I don't care if we were at Texas, we'd have packed up and come back. For, for Coach Rowe and for Cajun Nation and for his family. And say it all the time, we won't let him down. Your introductory press conference. Mm -hmm. You're speaking in front of some familiar faces again. Uh, what was that feeling like in you to, now you're at the helm, um, taking on a, a big role that a lot of people probably wouldn't have been accepted in. Um, what was that feeling like? It's the hardest thing I've ever done. You know, I've spoke all over the country in front of 6,000, you know, and that little bitty tiny room was the hardest thing I've ever done because I wasn't speaking for myself or for my family. You had Colleen, Ashley, Judd, Aud, their, Lon, their entire family is on the front row. I'm also speaking for the Roba shows, and there was a huge responsibility in that. Are you intimidated at all? No. Scared? Not at all. No. Look, when you've been close to death yourself, everything else for the rest of your life's gravy. I got a saying that damaged people are dangerous. You mm. know why? They know they can survive. Mm. And uh, no, I'm everything I do is for thirty six, and and uh, this this place is going to get raucous and nasty again, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Robichaux family support the move. Oh yeah, Colleen was at the house yesterday, and. You know, to a to a man and woman, uh, they they all asked us to come back here, 
mm. and without that, that wouldn't have happened. February 14th will be the season opener, I believe Southeastern Louisiana is the game. Um, Going to feel a little extra nerves, or what's what's going to go through your mind? You always do on opening day, and I think, uh, you know, you, you're not human if you don't have a little angst and anxiety going into the opening day, and I think that's part of what makes it so special. Uh, and then this one's going to be extra special, and I think every game this year will be because 36 is looking down on us, and we have a huge responsibility to, to take his torch and run with it. Goals for your first year? We want to get to Omaha. Year one? I, every year. Every year. We, anything short of that, you know, that's where our standard is. And that's where our expectation is, and that's what we work towards every day. Your day-to-day -day now, um, I'm assuming you're in a groove now. You played a couple of uh, exhibition games. Yeah. Good to see your pictures. How are you feeling about the squad this year? I like this team, you know. I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and they were like, well, this, you know, this really isn't your team. And I said, no, that's where you're wrong. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, the second I took the job here, uh, this is our ball club, and uh, we've got the team in place that, that we want to get after it with, and I feel really good about them. And uh, I'm expecting big things. How are you? You know, it's been, uh, it's, it's been a roller coaster ride, and uh, – one thing that's hard for people that haven't done it to understand is how arduous an actual move with a family of five, especially out of state, is. And, uh, you know, it's not a magic trick. You don't just show up. Right. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, this is the eighth time that we've done it and Kathy, since Kathy and I have been married. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you, you, you just show up every day early and you do absolutely the best job you can do. And over time, you start to get back into that groove. And, uh, you know, it's it hasn't just been my schedule. Part of what I've tried to do is pick up some of Coach Rove's as well. And so there's, uh, there's demands and, you know, also uh, time restraints. And, uh, but I'm committed to, to you know, picking up where coach left off the best absolute best we can and committed to the to the dudes we got in that clubhouse and to the coaches that are on the staff and then to my family at home two daughters one son what are their ages now kyler is 20 uh claire is 16 and chloe is uh 14. they all come to ul the two daughters <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that up to them. I'm sure they will. <laughs> Not going to force them? Yeah, yeah, if UL still has us when they get to that point. So, uh, no, you know, Kyler was actually at Virginia Tech when I took the job here. Mm. And going into his sophomore year, and uh, he decided to stay and, and go to school at UL. Um, how's the wife holding up? She's doing good. You know, she's the backbone. She's the CEO of the house. Mm -hmm. And, uh you know, it's, you know, it would be, uh, I'd be lying to say that it hasn't been uh, difficult at times or, or been some obstacles to overcome, but uh, she holds this whole thing together. Faith plus action. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? You know, it, it, this is what it means to me. If you can see it in your mind and, and believe it in your heart and wake up every day early and outwork everybody for it. And then you're willing, you've got the, the guts and, and the drive enough to take one step of action towards it every single day. At that point, man, when you mix those two together, I true, I'm a dreamer. I believe anything's possible. We'll end on this. Say you got 15 seconds. You're going to tell the people, all right? You can look right into that camera right there mm -hmm. and tell the people what they're going to get from UL baseball this year. What I say them? it all the time. You know, if you pay 20 bucks to get in, you're going to get 25 bucks in return mm -hmm. and uh, people people will always pay to see a fight they'll pay to see people compete get dirty sweat bleed and do it together and that's exactly what you're going to get mad dex thanks kevin